The London School of Economics officially the London School of Economics and Political Science, often referred to as the LSE is a public research university located in London, England, and a constituent college of the Federal University of London. Founded in 1895 by Fabian Society members Sidney Webb, Beatrice Webb, Graham Wallace, and George Bernard Shaw for the betterment of society, LSE joined the University of London in 1900 and established its first degree courses under the auspices of the university in 1901. The LSE started awarding its own degrees in 2008, prior to which it awarded degrees of the University of London. LSE is located in Westminster, central London, near the boundary between Covent Garden and Hoburn. The area is historically known as Clare Market. The LSE has more than 11,000 students and 3,300 staff, just under half of whom come from outside the UK. It had an income of £354.3 million in 2017 18, of which £31.6 million was from research grants. 155 nationalities are represented amongst LSE's student body and the school has the second highest percentage of international students of all world universities. Despite its name, the school is organized into 25 academic departments and institutes which conduct teaching and research across a range of legal studies and social sciences. LSE is a member of the Russell Group and is sometimes considered a part of the Golden Triangle of universities in southeast England. For the subject area of social science, LSE places second in the world in the QS rankings, tenth in the rankings, and eighth in the academic ranking of world universities. LSE is ranked among the top 15 universities nationally by all three UK tables, while internationally LSE is ranked in the top 50 by two of the three major global rankings. In the 2014 Research Excellence Framework, the school had the highest proportion of world-leading research among research submitted of any British non-specialist university. The LSE is also a member of academic organisations such as the Association of Commonwealth Universities and the European University Association. LSE has produced many notable alumni in the fields of law, history, economics, philosophy, psychology, business, literature, media and politics. Alumni and staff include 53 past or present heads of state or government and 20 members of the current British House of Commons. As of 2017, 26% or 13 out of 49 of all the Nobel Prizes in Economics have been awarded or jointly awarded to LSE alumni, current staff or former staff, making up 16% 13 out of 79 of all laureates. LSE alumni and staff have also won three Nobel Peace Prizes and two Nobel Prizes in Literature. Out of all European universities, LSE has educated the most billionaires according to a 2014 global census of US dollar billionaires. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. The London School of Economics was founded in 1895 by Beatrice and Sidney Webb, initially funded by a bequest of £20,000 from the estate of Henry Hunt Hutchinson. Hutchinson, a lawyer and member of the Fabian Society, left the money in trust, to be put towards advancing its the Fabian Society's objects in any way they the trustees deem advisable. The five trustees were Sidney Webb, Edward Pease, Constance Hutchinson, William de Matos and William Clark. LSE records that the proposal to establish the school was conceived during a breakfast meeting on 4 August 1894, between the Webbs, Louis Flood and George Bernard Shaw. The proposal was accepted by the trustees in February 1895 and LSE held its first classes in October of that year, in rooms at 9 John Street, Adelphi, in the city of Westminster. Topic: 20th century. The school joined the Federal University of London in 1900 and was recognised as a Faculty of Economics of the university. 
The University of London degrees of BSc Econ and DSc Econ were established in 1901, the first university degrees dedicated to the social sciences. Expanding rapidly over the following years, the school moved initially to the nearby 10 Adelphi Terrace, then to Clare Market and Horton Street. The foundation stone of the old building, on Horton Street, was laid by King George V in 1920. The building was opened in 1922. The 1930s economic debate between LSE and Cambridge is well known in academic circles. Rivalry between academic opinion at LSE and Cambridge goes back to the school's roots when LSE's Edwin Cannon (1861–1935), Professor of Economics, and Cambridge's Professor of Political Economy, Alfred Marshall (1842–1924), the leading economist of the day, argued about the bedrock matter of economics and whether the subject should be considered as an organic whole. Marshall disapproved of LSE's separate listing of pure theory and its insistence on economic history. The dispute also concerned the question of the economist's role, and whether this should be as a detached expert or a practical advisor. Despite the traditional view that the LSE and Cambridge were fierce rivals through the 1920s and 30s, they worked together in the 1920s on the London and Cambridge Economic Service. However, the 1930s brought a return to disputes as economists at the two universities argued over how best to address the economic problems caused by the Great Depression. The main figures in this debate were John Maynard Keynes from Cambridge and the LSE's Friedrich Hayek. The LSE economist Lionel Robbins was also heavily involved. Starting off as a disagreement over whether demand management or deflation was the better solution to the economic problems of the time, it eventually embraced much wider concepts of economics and macroeconomics. Keynes put forward the theories now known as Keynesian economics, involving the active participation of the state and public sector, while Hayek and Robbins followed the Austrian school, which emphasized free trade and opposed state involvement. During World War II, the school decamped from London to the University of Cambridge, occupying buildings belonging to Peterhouse. The school's arms, including its motto and beaver mascot, were adopted in February 1922, on the recommendation of a committee of twelve, including eight students, which was established to research the matter. The Latin motto, Rerum cognoscere causas, is taken from Virgil's Georgics. Its English translation is, to know the causes of things, and it was suggested by Professor Edwin Cannon. The beaver mascot was selected for its associations with, foresight, constructiveness and industrious behavior. Topic: 21st century. LSE continues to have a wide impact within British society through its relationships and influence in politics, business, and law. The Guardian described such influence in 2005 when it stated, "Once again, the political clout of the school, which seems to be closely wired into Parliament, Whitehall, and the Bank of England, is being felt by ministers." The strength of LSE is that it is close to the political process. Mervyn King was a former LSE professor. The chairman of the House of Commons Education Committee, Barry Shearman, sits on its board of governors, along with Labour peer Lord Frank Judd. Also on the board are Tory MPs Virginia Bottomley and Richard Shepherd, as well as Lord Saatchi and Lady Howe. Commenting in 2001 on the rising status of the LSE, the British magazine The Economist stated that, two decades ago the LSE was still the poor relation of the University of London's other colleges. Now, it regularly follows Oxford and Cambridge in league tables of research output and teaching quality and is at least as well known abroad as Oxbridge. According to the magazine, the school owes its success to the single-minded, American-style exploitation of its brand name and political connections by the recent directors, particularly Mr. Giddens and his predecessor, John Ashworth, and raises money from foreign students' high fees, which are attracted by academic stars such as Richard Sennett. As of 2006, the school was active in opposing British government proposals to introduce compulsory ID cards, researching into the associated costs of the scheme, and shifting public and government opinion on the issue. 
The institution is also popular with politicians and MPs to launch new policy, legislation and manifesto pledges, prominently with the launch of the Liberal Democrats' Manifesto Conference under Nick Clegg on 12 January 2008. Topic: 2010 to present. In the early 2010s, its academics have been at the forefront of both national and international government consultations, reviews, and policy, including representation on the UK Airports Commission, Independent Police Commission, Migration Advisory Committee, UN Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation, London Finance Commission, HS2 Limited, the UK Government's Infrastructure Commission, and advising on architecture and urbanism for the London 2012 Olympics. Greg Calhoun took up the post of director in September. September 2012. Its previous director, Judith Rees, is also chair of the school's Grantham Institute on Climate Change, an advisor to the World Bank as well as sitting on the UN Secretary-General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation and the International Scientific Advisory Council She is also a former convener of the Department of Geography and Environment and served as Deputy Director from 1998 to 2004. In February 2016, Calhoun announced his intention to step down at the end of the academic year, in order to become president of the Berggruen Institute. In September 2016, Bank of England Deputy Governor Dame Nemat Shafik was announced to replace Professor Julia Black as the school's director. Shafik began to lead the LSE in September 2017. Topic. Controversy. In February 2011, LSE had to face the consequences of matriculating one of Muammar Gaddafi's sons, while accepting a £1.5 million donation to the university from his family. In March 2011, LSE director Howard Davies resigned over allegations about the institution's links to the Libyan regime. The LSE announced in a statement that it had accepted his resignation with great regret and that it had set up an external inquiry into the school's relationship with the Libyan regime and Saif al-Islam Gaddafi, to be conducted by the former Lord Chief Justice Harry Wolfe. In 2013, the LSE was caught in a furore over a BBC Panorama documentary on North Korea, filmed inside the repressive regime by undercover journalists attached to a trip by the LSE's Grimshaw Society, a student society of the International Relations Department. The trip had been sanctioned by high-level North Korean officials. The trip caused international media attention, as a BBC journalist was posing as a part of LSE. There was debate as to where this put the students' lives in jeopardy in the repressive regime if a reporter had been exposed. The North Korea government made hostile threats towards the students and LSE, after the publicity, which forced an apology from the BBC. In August 2015, it was revealed that the university was paid approximately £40,000 for a glowing report for Camila Batmangelajach's charity, Kids Company. The study was used by Batmangelajach to prove that the charity provided good value for money and was well managed. However, the university did not disclose that the study was funded by the charity and claims made by the report have since been discredited. Topic: <laughs> Campus and Estate. Since 1902, LSE has been based at Clare Market and Horton Street in Westminster. It is surrounded by a number of important institutions including the Royal Courts of Justice, all four Inns of Courts, Royal College of Surgeons, Sir John Soane's Museum, and the West End is immediately across Kingsway from campus, which also borders the City of London and is within walking distance to Trafalgar Square and the Houses of Parliament. In 1920, King George V laid the foundation of the old building. The campus now occupies an almost continuous group of around 30 buildings between Kingsway and the Aldwych. Alongside teaching and academic space, the institution also owns 11 student halls of residence across London, two public houses, a West End Theatre, the Peacock, Early Years Centre, NHS Medical Centre and extensive sports ground in Berrylands, South London. 
The school's campus is noted for its numerous public art installations which include Richard Wilson's Square the Block, Michael Brown's Blue Rain, Christopher Le Brun's Desert Window. Since the early 2000s, the entire campus has undergone an extensive refurbishment project and a major fundraising campaign for LSE. Raised over £100 million in what was one of the largest university fundraising exercises outside North America. This process was begun with the £35 million renovation of the Lionel Robbins Building by Sir Norman Foster to house the British Library of Political and Economic Science BLPES, the world's largest social science and political library and the second largest single entity library in Britain, after the British Library at King's Cross. In 2003, LSE purchased the former public trustee building at 24 Kingsway, and engaged Sir Nicholas Grimshaw to redesign it into an ultra-modern educational facility at a total cost of over £45 million, increasing the size of the campus by 120,000 square feet square meters. The new academic building opened for teaching in October 2008, with an official opening by Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh on 5 November 2008. In November 2009 the school purchased the adjacent Sardinia House to house three academic departments and the nearby Old White Horse Public House, before acquiring the freehold of the Grade II listed land registry building at 32 Lincoln's Inn Fields in October 2010, which was reopened in March 2013 by HRH The Princess Royal as the new home for the Department of Economics, International Growth Center and its associated economic research centers. Saw Sui Hock Student Center The first new building on the site for more than 40 years, the Saw Sui Hock Student Center, opened in January 2014 following an architectural design competition managed by Reba Competitions. The building provides new accommodation for the LSE Students' Union, LSE Accommodation Office and LSE Careers Service as well as a bar, event space, gymnasium, rooftop terrace, learning cafe, dance studio and media center. The building, designed as a showpiece for the city of Westminster and Midtown was recognized as having a low environmental impact receiving an outstanding status under BREEAM, and in 2012 was one of three winners of the New London Award in the education category. In May 2014 the Saw Sui Hock Student Centre won the Reba London Building of the Year Award. Topic expansion It is currently embarking on redevelopment and expansion with the development of a £120 million new facility designed by Rogers Sturck Harbour and Partners following the completion of a global design competition managed by Reba Competitions. Once complete in 2018 the new development, the Global Center for the Social Sciences, will house the Departments of Government, International Relations and the European Institute and feature a new square at the center of the campus. In September 2013, LSE purchased the freehold of 44 Lincoln's Inn Fields, previously the home of the Francis Crick Institute's laboratories until 2016. The building will be demolished in 2017 to make way for the new Paul Marshall Building which will house academic departments management, accounting and finance, sports facilities and the new Marshall Institute for Philanthropy and Social Entrepreneurship. In 2015, LSE brought its ownership of buildings on Lincoln's Inn Fields to six with the purchase of five Lincoln's Inn Fields on the north side of the square which has since been converted into faculty accommodation. On 15 November 2017, LSE announced that it has achieved contract completion on the purchase to acquire the Nuffield Building, which is adjacent to the Lincoln's Inn Fields, from the Royal College of Surgeons. According to the contract the building will be transferred to LSE after renovations in 2020. Topic: Transport. The nearest London underground stations are Holborn, Temple and Covent Garden. Charing Cross, at the Trafalgar Square end of Strand, and the City Thameslink entrance at Ludgate Hill are the nearest mainline stations, whilst London Waterloo is a walk or bus across the River Thames. Buses to Aldwych, Kingsway and the Royal Courts of Justice contain stops which are designated as alight here for LSE. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Organisation and Administration. Uh, 
Topic: <laughs> Governance. Although LSE is a constituent college of the Federal University of London, it is in many ways comparable with freestanding, self-governing and independently funded universities, and it awards its own degrees. LSE is incorporated under the Companies Act as a company limited by guarantee and is an exempt charity within the meaning of Schedule II of the Charities Act 1993. The principal governance bodies of the LSE are, the LSE Council, the Court of Governors, the Academic Board, and the Director and Director's Management Team. The LSE Council is responsible for strategy and its members are company directors of the school. It has specific responsibilities in relation to areas including, the monitoring of institutional performance, finance and financial sustainability, audit arrangements, estate strategy, human resource and employment policy, health and safety educational character and mission, and student experience. The Council is supported in carrying out its role by a number of committees which report directly to it. The Court of Governors deals with certain constitutional matters and has pre-decision discussions on key policy issues and the involvement of individual governors in the school's activities. The court has the following formal powers, the appointment of members of court, its subcommittees and of the council, election of the chair and vice-chairs of the court and council and honorary fellows of the school, the amendment of the memorandum and articles of association, and the appointment of external auditors. The academic board is LSE's principal academic body, and considers all major issues of general policy affecting the academic life of the school and its development. It is chaired by the director, with staff and student membership, and is supported by its own structure of committees. The vice chair of the academic board serves as a non-director member of the council and makes a termly report to the council. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Director and President. The director is the head of LSE and its chief executive officer, responsible for executive management and leadership on academic issues. Since 2013, the addition of the name President has also been adopted alongside signaling an additional title more widely understood when traveling or undertaking business globally. The director and president reports to and is accountable to the council. The director is also the accountable officer for the purposes of the Higher Education Funding Council for England Financial Memorandum. The LSE's current director is Dame Nemat Shafik, who replaced interim director, Professor Julia Black, on 1 September 2017. The director and president is supported by a deputy director and provost who oversees the heads of academic departments and institutes, three pro-directors each with designated portfolios, teaching and learning, research and planning and resources, and the school secretary who acts as company secretary. <laughs> <laughs> academic departments and institutes LSE's research and teaching is organized into a network of independent academic departments established by the LSE Council, the school's governing body, on the advice of the academic board, the school's senior academic authority. There are currently 27 academic departments or institutes. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Finances. The LSE Group has an endowment as of the 31st of July 2016 of 119 million pounds and had a total income for 2015-16, excluding donations and endowments, of 311 million pounds, 293 million pounds in 2014-15, with expenditure of 307 million pounds, 2014-15, 302 million pounds. Key sources of income included £177 million from tuition fees and education contacts 2014-15 million pounds £25 million from funding council grants 2014-15 million pounds £32 million from research grants 2014-15 million pounds and £5.3 million from investment income 2014-15 4.7 million pounds the times 
Higher Education Pay Survey 2017 revealed that, among larger, non-specialist institutions, LSE professors and academics were the highest paid in the UK, with average incomes of £103,886 and £65,177 respectively. Topic. Endowment The London School of Economics LSE is aiming to increase the size of its endowment fund to more than £1 billion, which would make it one of the best resourced institutions in the UK and the world. The effort was initiated in 2016 by Lord Miners, then chairman of the LSE's Council and Court of Governors. The plan includes working with wealthy alumni of LSE to make large contributions, increasing the annual budget surplus, and launching a new, wide-scale alumni donor campaign. The plan to grow LSE's endowment to more than £1 billion has been continued by Lord Miner's successes at the LSE. The LSE has stated that currently, limited endowment funding constrains our ability to offer needs blind admission to students. Topic. Academic year LSE continues to adopt a three-term structure and has not moved to semesters. Michaelmas term runs from October to mid-December, Lent term from mid-January to late March and summer term from late April to mid-June. Certain departments operate reading weeks in early November and mid-February. Logo, arms and mascot The school's historic coat of arms is used on official documentation including degree certificates and transcripts and includes the motto, Rerum Cognoscere Causes, a line taken from Virgil's Georgics meaning, to know the causes of things, together with the school's mascot, a beaver. Both these symbols, adopted in February 1922, continue to be held in high regard to this day with the beaver chosen because of its representation as a hard-working and industrious yet sociable animal, attributes that the founders hoped LSE students to both possess and aspire to. The school's weekly newspaper is still entitled The Beaver, Rosebury Residence Hall's bar is called The Tipsy Beaver and LSE sports teams are known as The Beavers. The institution has two sets of colors, brand and academic, red being the brand color used on signage, publications and in buildings across campus and purple, black and gold for academic purposes including presentation ceremonies and graduation dress. LSE's present red block logo was adopted as part of a rebrand in the early 2000s, before which the school's coat of arms was used exclusively to represent the institution. As a trademarked brand, it is carefully protected but can be produced in various forms to reflect different requirements. In its full form it contains the full name of the institution to the right of the block with a further small empty red square at the end, but it is adapted for each academic department or professional service division to provide a cohesive brand across the institution. Topic. Academic profile. Topic. Admissions Admission to LSE is highly competitive. The school received 18,000 applications for 1,600 undergraduate places in 2016, or 11.25 applicants per place. All undergraduate applications, including international applications, are made through UCAS. LSE had the fourth highest average entry qualification for undergraduates of any UK university in 2015-16, with new students averaging 537 UCAS points pre-2017 tariff, equivalent to just below A asterisk AAA in A-level grades. The university gives offers of admission to 37.0% of its applicants, the third lowest amongst the Russell Group. 
For 2017 entry, the university was one of only a few mainstream universities along with Cambridge, Imperial College, Oxford, St Andrews, UCL, and Warwick to have no courses available in clearing. Postgraduate students at the LSE are required to have a first or upper second class UK honours degree, or its foreign equivalent for master's degrees, while direct entry to the MPhil PhD programme requires a UK taught master's with merit or foreign equivalent. Admission to the diploma requires as UK degree or equivalent plus relevant experience. The intake to applications ratio for postgraduate degree programs is very competitive. The MSc Financial Mathematics had a ratio of just over 4% in 2016. 31.6% of LSE's undergraduates are privately educated, the ninth highest proportion amongst mainstream British universities. In the 2016-17 academic year, the university had a domicile breakdown of 33 hours 18 minutes and 50 seconds of UK, EU, non-EU students respectively with a female to male ratio of 52 to 47. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Programs and degrees. LSE is the only university in the United Kingdom dedicated solely to the study and research of social sciences. LSE awards a range of academic degrees spanning bachelor's, master's and PhDs. The post-nominals awarded are the degree abbreviations used commonly among British universities. The school offers over 140 MSc programs, 5 MPA programs, an LLM, 30 BSc programs, an LLB, 4 BA programs including international history and geography, and 35 PhD programs. Other subjects pioneered by LSE include anthropology, criminology, social psychology, sociology and social policy, with international relations being first taught as a discipline at LSE. Courses are split across more than 30 research centers and 19 departments, plus a language center. Since programs are all within the social sciences, they closely resemble each other, and undergraduate students usually take at least one course module in a subject outside of their degree for their first and second years of study, promoting a broader education in the social sciences. At undergraduate level, some departments have as few as 90 students across the three years of study. Since September 2010, it has been compulsory for first-year undergraduates to participate in LSE 100, understanding the causes of things alongside normal studies, from 1902, following its absorption into the University of London, and up until 2007, all degrees were awarded by the Federal University, in common with all other colleges of the university. This system was changed in 2007 to enable some colleges to award their own degrees. LSE was granted the power to begin awarding its own degrees from July 2008. All students entering from the 2007-8 academic year onwards received an LSE degree, while students who started before this date were issued University of London degrees. In conjunction with NYU Stern and HEC Paris, LSE also offers the Trium Executive MBA. This was globally ranked third among executive MBAs by the Financial Times in 2016. Topic. Research In the 2014 Research Excellence Framework, LSE had the joint highest percentage of world-leading research among research submitted of any institution that entered more than one unit of assessment and was ranked third by cumulative grade point average with a score of 3.35, beating both Oxford and Cambridge. It was ranked 23rd in the country for research power by Research Fortnight based on its REF 2014 results, and 28th in research power by The Times Higher Education. This followed the research assessment exercise in 2008 where the school was placed second equal nationally on GPA, first for fraction of world leading four asterisk research and fourth for fraction of world leading or internationally excellent three asterisk and four asterisk research in LSE's analysis of the results, fourth equal for GPA and 29th for research power in Times Higher Education's analysis, and 27th in research power by Research Fortnight's analysis, according to analysis 
basis of the REF 2014 subject results by Times Higher Education. The school is the UK's top research university in terms of GPA of research submitted in business and management, area studies, and communication, cultural and media studies, library and information management, and second in law, politics and international studies, economics and econometrics, and social work and social policy. Topic. Research centers The school houses a number of notable centers including the Center for the Analysis of Social Exclusion, the Center for Climate Change Economics and Policy, the Center for Macroeconomics, Center for Economic Performance, LSE Health and Social Care, the Financial Markets Group founded by former Bank of England Governor Sir Mervyn King, the Grantham Research Institute on Climate Change and the Environment chaired by Lord Stern, LSE Cities, the UK Department for International Development funded International Group Growth Centre and one of the six the UK government backed What Works Centres the What Works Centre for Local Economic Growth. Topic: <laughs> LSE Institute of Global Affairs. In late 2014, LSE hired Eric Bogloff, former chief economist and special advisor to the EBRD to establish a new Institute of Global Affairs with seven regional research centers focusing on Africa, East Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, the Middle East, South Asia, Southeast Asia and the United States. It is joined by the LSE Ideas Think Tank, which in a global survey conducted by the University of Pennsylvania in 2015 was jointly ranked as world's second best university think tanks for the third year running alongside the LSE Public Policy Group, after Harvard University's Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs. In February 2015, Angelina Jolie and William Hague launched the UK's first academic center on women, peace and security, based at the school. The centre aims to contribute to global women's rights issues, including the prosecution of war rape and women's engagement in politics, through academic research, a postgraduate teaching programme, public engagement, and collaboration with international organisations. Furthermore, in May 2016 it was announced that Jolie Pitt and Haig would join Jane Connors and Madeleine Rees as visiting professors in practice from September 2016. Topic. Partnerships LSE has academic partnerships in teaching and research with six universities, with Columbia University in New York City and University of California, Berkeley, in Asia with Peking University in Beijing and the National University of Singapore, in Africa with the University of Cape Town and Europe with Sciences Po in Paris. Together they offer a range of double or joint degree programs including an MA in International and World History with Columbia and an MSc in International Affairs with Peking University. University, with graduates earning degrees from both institutions. The school also offers joint degrees for specific departments with various other universities including Fudan University in Shanghai, USC in Los Angeles and a global studies program which is offered with a consortium of four European universities, Leipzig, Vienna, Roskiller and Wrocław. It offers the Trium Global Executive MBA program jointly with Stern School of Business of New York University and HEC School of Management, Paris. It is divided into six modules held in five international business locations over a 16-month period. LSE also offers a dual Master of Public Administration MPA with global public policy network schools such as Sciences Po Paris, the Hertie School of Governance and National University of Singapore. The school also runs exchange programs with the Cornell University, Samuel Curtis Johnson Graduate School of Management, University of Chicago, Booth School of Business, University of Texas at Austin, McCombs School of Business, Emory University, Goizuita Business School, University of Michigan, Ross School of Business, Yale University, School of Management, Duke University, Fuqua School of Business, Peking University, Guanghua School of Management, HEC Paris, Northwestern University, Kellogg School of Management through the Global Masters in Management program and an undergraduate student exchange program with the University of California, Berkeley in Political Science. 
LSE is the only UK member school in the CEMS Alliance, and the LSE Global Masters in Management is the only programme in the UK to offer the CEMS Masters in International Management as a double degree option, allowing students to study at one of 30 CEMS partner universities. It also participates in Key Action 1 of the European Union wide Erasmus Plus programme, encouraging staff and student mobility for teaching, although not the other key actions in the programme. The school is a member of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs, the European University Association, the G5, the Global Alliance in Management Education, the Russell Group and Universities UK, and is sometimes considered part of the «Golden Triangle» of universities in southeast England, along with the University of Oxford, the University of Cambridge, University College London, Imperial College London, and King's College London. Topic. Libraries and archives The school's main library, the British Library of Political and Economic Science is located in the Lionel Robbins Building and contains over 4 million print volumes, 60,000 online journals and 29,000 electronic books. The digital library contains digitized material from LSE library collections and also born digital material that has been collected and preserved in digital formats. Founded in 1896, it is the world's largest social and political sciences library and the National Social Science Library of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth. Its collections are recognized for their outstanding national and international status and hold designation status by the Museums, Libraries and Archives Council MLA. BLPES responds to around 7,500 visits from students and staff each day. In addition, it provides a specialist international research collection, serving over 12,000 registered external users each year. The Shaw Library, housed in LSE's Founders Room in the old building contains the school's collection of fiction and general readings. It also hosts a weekly series of lunchtime music concerts and press launches and is the home of the Fabian Window which was unveiled by Tony Blair in 2003. In 2013, LSE purchased the Women's Library, Britain's main library and museum resource on women and the women's movement and a UNESCO classified resource from London Metropolitan University, moving the resources and artefacts into a new purpose-built facility within the Lionel Robbins building complete with its own reading room and exhibition space. Several subject-specific libraries also exist including the Seligman Library for Anthropology, the Himmelweit Library for Social Psychology, the Leverhulme Library for Statistics, the Robert Mackenzie Library for Sociology, the Michael Wise Library for Geography and the Gender Institute Library. Additionally, students are permitted to use the libraries of any other University of London College, and the extensive facilities at Senate House Library, situated in Russell Square. Topic. LSE Summer School The original LSE Summer School was established in 1989 and has since expanded to offer over 73-week courses in accounting, finance, economics, English language, international relations, government, law and management each July and August. It is advertised as the largest and one of the most well established university summer schools of its kind in Europe. In recent years, the school has expanded its summer schools both abroad and into executive education with the LSE PKU Summer School in Beijing, run with Peking University, the LSE UCT July School in Cape Town, run with the University of Cape Town, and the Executive Summer School at its London campus. In 2011, it also launched a method summer program. Together these courses welcome over 5,000 participants from over 130 countries and some of the top colleges and universities around the world, as well as professionals from several multinational institutions. Participants are housed in LSE halls of residence or their overseas equivalents, and the summer school provides a full social program including guest lectures and receptions. Topic. Public lectures Public lectures hosted by LSE Events Office, are open to students, alumni and the general public. 
As well as leading academics and commentators, speakers frequently include prominent national and international figures such as ambassadors, CEOs, members of parliament, and heads of state. A number of these are broadcast live around the world via the school's website. LSE organizes over 200 public events every year. Recent prominent speakers have included Kofi Annan, Ben Bernanke, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, David Cameron, Noam Chomsky, Bill Clinton, Philip Craven, Niall Ferguson, Vicente Fox, Milton Friedman, Muammar Gaddafi, Julia Gillard, Alan Greenspan, Tenzin Gyatso, Lee Hsien Lung, Boris Johnson, David Harvey, Jean Tyrrell, Angelina Jolie, Paul Krugman, Dmitry Medvedev, Mario Monti, George Osborne. Osborne, Robert Peston, Sebastian Panera, Kevin Rudd, Jeffrey Sachs, Gerhard Schroeder, Carlos de Mesa, Luis Inorcio Lula da Silva, Ong San Su Kyi, Amartya Sen, George Soros and Rowan Williams. Previously, the school has hosted figures including Nelson Mandela and Margaret Thatcher. There are also a number of annual lecture series hosted by various departments. These include but are not limited to the Malinowski Memorial Lectures hosted by the Department of Anthropology, the Lionel Robbins Memorial Lectures and the Ralph Miliband Program. ICSI briefings The ICSI briefings from 9 written in Roman numerals, are private discussions which are attended by around 40 distinguished people, chaired by Lord Desai. At the briefings, two speakers talk for 15 minutes each before discussion is open to all attendees. Operating under Chatham House rules, ICSI briefings provide an opportunity for the LSE to exhibit its resources and engage with experts and prominent figures. The ICSI briefings are run by LSE Enterprises. Topic rankings and reputation In overall national rankings, the LSE consistently places as a top 15 university, ranking third in the Complete University Guide 2017, 12th in the Guardian University Guide 2017 and 8th in the Times, Sunday Times Good University Guide 2017, placing it 7th in the Times Higher Education Table of Tables 2017. The LSE also ranked third overall in the Sunday Times University Guide cumulative ranking over a 10-year period 1998 to 2007. LSE is one of only eight universities along with the other members of the G5, Bath, St Andrews and Warwick to have never left the top 15 in one of the three main domestic rankings between 2008 to 2017. According to data released by the Department for Education in 2018, LSE was rated as the best university for boosting graduate earnings, with male graduates seeing a 47.2% increase in earnings and female graduates seeing a 38.2% increase in earnings compared to the average graduate. The QS World University rankings for 2015 16 saw LSE move up 36 places from 71st to 35th globally in the overall ratings and keep its number one position position in the UK for social sciences, as well as being ranked second in the world for social sciences for the third year in a row. The 2016-17 rankings saw the LSE placed 37th overall and again retain its social science rankings, as well as ranking 6th for employer reputation. LSE is ranked 53rd in the world and 7th in the UK in the 2017 round university ranking. The 2016-17 Times Higher Education World University Rankings ranked LSE 25th globally and placed it 5th in the country. When looking specifically at social sciences, Times Higher Education ranks LSE at 15th globally and 4th in the country. LSE was also ranked 24th for reputation by Times Higher Education in 2016. However, the academic ranking of world universities placed the LSE 151 to 216 to 21 nationally for 2016-17, while the US News and World Report Best Global Universities 2017 placed it 261st globally and 30th in the UK. The citation-based CWTS Leiden ranking placed LSE 90th worldwide and 16th in the UK. In addition to ranking the LSE second in the world for social sciences and management, the QS World University Rankings by Subject 2017 ranks individual LSE departments third in the world for geography, communication and media studies, politics, and social policy and administration. 
It is ranked in the top 10 for anthropology, development studies, accounting and finance, history, philosophy, law, economics, and business and management studies, in the top 30 for psychology, and the top 40 for statistics. ForeignPolicy.com ranked LSE's International Relations Department as having the only non-U.S. program in the top 10 for master's degrees in international relations in surveys of U.S. academics in 2011 and 2014. Disparities between national and international league tables have caused LSE to offer public explanations for the difference, including the statement in 2012. At mid 2012, LSE has seen pleasing improvements over the last couple of years in our standing in all the main global rankings, those produced by Times Higher Education, QS, and Shanghai Jiaotong University, the academic ranking of world universities. We have also seen good rises in the domestic UK rankings. But we remain concerned that all of the global rankings, by some way the most important for us, given our highly international orientation, suffer from inbuilt biases in favor of large multi-faculty universities with full STEM science, technology, engineering and mathematics offerings, and against small, specialist, mainly non-STEM universities such as LSE. In the The QS World University Rankings, the school was ranked 11th in the world in 2004 and 2005, but dropped to 66th and 67th in the 2008 and 2009 edition. The school administration asserts that the fall was due to a controversial change in survey method which was detrimental to the ratings of social science institutions. In January 2010, the concluded that the method employed by Quacquarelli Simmons, who conducted the survey on the behalf, was flawed in such a way that bias was introduced against certain institutions, including LSE. A representative of Thomson Reuters, THE's new partner, commented on the controversy, LSE stood at only 67th in the last Times Higher Education QS World University rankings, some mistake surely. Yes, and quite a big one, nonetheless, after the change of data provider to Thomson Reuters the following year, LSE fell even further to 86th place, with the ranking described by a representative of Thomson Reuters as a fair reflection of their status as a world-class university. In the 2012 rankings, LSE was 69th in the QS table, 47th in the Times Higher Education table and in the range 101 to 150 in the ARWU table. It has since risen in the QS and Times Higher Education tables due to changed methodology, while the ARWU remains unchanged. LSE has continued to attain these lower rankings reaching 69th in 2013-14, which place it behind 11 other British universities, with this being described as a pleasing improvement by LSE. In the now separated from QS, the 2014 ranking the school climbed up to 32nd in the world. In its first world ranking prepared by the U.S. News & World Report 2015, the school was ranked 328th in the world, and 32nd in the country. In 2016 ranking, the school moves upward to 327th in the world, but drops to 33rd in the country. Nevertheless, the school was the only one of its type to finish in the top 200 universities, and was thus stated to be the best medium-sized specialized research university in the world. The 2017 U.S. News & World Report ranks LSE 261st in the world, tied with the International School for Advanced Studies, in Italy, Pohang University of Science and Technology, in South Korea, and the University of Oregon, in the United States. According to WealthX and UBS's Billionaire Census in 2014, LSE ranked 10th in the list of 20 schools that have produced the most billionaire alumni. The LSE was the only UK university to make the list. In the 2017 National Student Survey, LSE came 145th out of 148 for overall student satisfaction. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Student life. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Student body. In the 2015-16 academic year there were 10,833 full-time students and around 700 part-time students at the school. 
Of these, approximately 7,500 came from outside the United Kingdom approximately 70% of the total student body, making LSE a highly international school with over 160 countries represented. LSE had more countries represented by students than the UN, 32% of LSE's students come from Asia, 10% from North America, 2% each from South America and Africa. Combined over 100 languages are spoken at LSE. Over half of LSE's students are postgraduates, and there is approximately an equal split between genders with 51% male and 49% female students. Alumni total over 160,000, covering over 190 countries with more than 80 active alumni groups. Topic Students Union The LSE Students Union LSESU is affiliated to the National Union of Students and is responsible for campaigning and lobbying the school on behalf of students as well providing student support and the organization and undertaking of entertainment events and student societies. It is often regarded as the most politically active in Britain, a reputation it has held since the well-documented LSE student riots in 1966-67 and 1968-69, which made international headlines. In 2015, the school was awarded the top spot for student nightlife by The Guardian newspaper due in part to its central location and provision of over 200 societies, 40 sports clubs, a raising and giving rag branch and a thriving media group. In 2013, the union moved into a purpose-built new building, the Saw Sui Hock Student Centre on the Aldwych campus. A weekly student newspaper The Beaver, is published each Tuesday during term time and is amongst the oldest student newspapers in the country. It sits alongside a radio station, Pulse, which has existed since 1999 and a television station Loose Television since 2005. The Clare Market Review one of Britain's oldest student publications was revived in 2008. Over £150,000 is raised for charity each year through the RAG Raising and Giving, the fundraising arm of the Students' Union, which was started in 1980 by then Student Union Entertainments Officer and former New Zealand MP Tim Barnett. Sporting activity is coordinated by the LSE Athletics Union, which is a constituent of British Universities and Colleges Sport BUCS. Student housing LSE owns or operates 10 halls of residence in and around central London and there are also two halls owned by Urbanist and five intercollegiate halls shared with other constituent colleges of the University of London within a three-mile radius of the school, for a total of over 4,000 places. Most residences take both undergraduates and postgraduates, a la Carr Saunders Hall and Passfield Hall are undergraduate only, and Butler's Wharf Residence, Grosvenor House and Lillian Knowles House are reserved for postgraduates. Sydney Webb House, managed by Unite Students, takes postgraduates and continuing students. There are also flats available on Anson and Carlton Roads, which are reserved for students with children. The school guarantees accommodation for all first year undergraduate students, and many of the school's larger postgraduate population are also catered for, with some specific residences available for postgraduate living. Whilst none of the residences are located at the Aldwych campus, the closest, Grosvenor House is within a five-minute walk from the school in Covent Garden, whilst the farthest residences, Nutford and Butler's Wharf, are approximately 45 minutes by tube or bus. Each residence accommodates a mixture of students both home and international, male and female, and, usually, undergraduate and postgraduate. New undergraduate students including general course students occupy approximately 55% of all spaces, with postgraduates taking approximately 40% and continuing students about 5% of places. The largest LSE student residence, Bankside House, a refurbished early 1950s office block and former headquarters of the Central Electricity Generating Board, opened to students in 1996 and is fully catered, accommodating 617 students across eight floors overlooking the River Thames. It is located behind the Tate Modern Art Gallery on the south bank of the river. The second largest residence, the High Hoban residence in High Hoban, was opened in 1995 and is approximately 10 minutes walk from the main campus. 
It is self-catering, accommodating 447 students in flats of four or five bedrooms with shared facilities. Other accommodation is located in the surrounding area. Butler's Wharf is situated next to Tower Bridge. Rosebury Hall is located in the London borough of Islington close to Sadler's Wells, and Carr Saunders Hall, named after the LSE professor, is approximately five minutes from Telecom Tower in the heart of Fitzrovia. Since 2005, the school has opened three new residences to provide accommodation for all first-year students. Lillian Knowles, independently operated in Spitalfields, is home for approximately 360 students and opened in 2006. It is located in a converted Victorian night refuge, the remnants of which can still be seen on the outside facade. It is a common stop on Jack the Ripper tours as one of his victims is commonly believed to have been a one-time resident. Planning permission was sought to convert the Grade II listed Northumberland House, on Northumberland Avenue into a new residence in June 2005, and the accommodation opened to students in October 2006. It was formerly a Victorian Grand Hotel and lately government offices. The closest residence to the Aldwych campus is reserved for postgraduate students and is located on the eastern side of Drury Lane at the crossroads of Great Queen Street and Long Acre. Grosvenor House, converted from a Victorian office building, opened in September 2005. The residence is unique in that all of its 169 rooms are small, self-contained studios, with private toilet and shower facilities and a mini kitchen. Topic notable people LSE has a long list of notable alumni and staff, spanning the fields of scholarship covered by the school. Among them are 18 Nobel Prize winners in economics, peace and literature. The school has over 50 fellows of the British Academy on its staff, while other notable former staff members include Brian Barry, Morris Cranston, Anthony Giddens, Harold Lasky, Ralph Miliband, Michael Oakeshott, A. W. Phillips, Karl Popper, Lionel Robbins, Susan Strange, Bob Ward and Charles Webster. Mervyn King, the former Governor of the Bank of England, is also a former Professor of Economics. In the political arena notable alumni and staff include, 53 past or present heads of state, 20 members of the current British House of Commons and 46 members of the current House of Lords. Former British Prime Minister, Clement Attlee taught at the school from 1912 to 1923. In recent British politics, former LSE students include Virginia Bottomley, Yvette Cooper, Edwina Curry, Frank Dobson, Margaret Hodge, Robert Kilroy Silk and former UK Labour Party leader Ed Miliband. Internationally, Brazilian Defence Minister Celso Amarim, Costa Rican President Oscar Arias, Japanese Prime Minister Taro Aso, Queen Margaret II of Denmark, architect of the Indian Constitution and eminent economist B. R. Ambedkar, President of India K. R. Narayanan, President of Taiwan Tsai Ing-wen, Italian Prime Minister and President of the European Commission, Romano Prodi, French Foreign Minister and President of the Constitutional Council Roland Dumas as well as Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the International Monetary and Financial Committee at the International Monetary Fund IMF, Tharman Shanmugaratnam all studied at LSE. A notable number of LSE students have also played a role in the Barack Obama administration, including Pete Rouse, Peter R. Orsorg, Mona Sutphin, Paul Volcker and Jason Furman. Physician Vanessa Carey and American journalist Susan Rasky are also alumni of the LSE. Notable American Monica Lewinsky pursued her MSc in social psychology at the LSE. Business people who studied at LSE include the CEO of AirAsia Tony Fernandez, former CEO of General Motors Daniel Ackerson, director of Louis Vuitton Delphine Arno, founder of EasyJet Stelios Haji Ioannou, CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch Michael S. Jeffries, Greek business magnate Spiros Latsis, American banker David Rockefeller, CEO of Newsmax Media Christopher Ruddy, founder of advertising agency Saatchi and Saatchi Morris Saatchi, hedge fund managers George Soros and Michael Platt. Nobel laureates associated with the London School of Economics. Equals equals notes. <laughs>